This episode is brought to you by Munton's Malls, a company that is passionate about providing premium malts to brewers worldwide. For over a century, Munton's has been a leading supplier of brewing and distilling malts, offering the finest British malted barley on the market. You can experience the difference Munton's offers by joining a recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club because every kit that ships out now includes premium Munton's malt. You know, we've known the Munton's crew for a long time, and I can tell you, friend, you're going to love brewing with their grains. Ask your local supply shop to carry Munton's malts, or homebrewers can join our Trub Club at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club, be a part of the community, and come brew with us. Thank you, Muntons, for supporting our efforts and homebrewers worldwide. Today's show is brought to you by HopsDirect.com. Grown in the esteemed Yakima Valley on the Pewterball family farm, HopsDirect.com offers the widest variety of hops available online at incredibly competitive pricing. It's simple. They grow hops, they sell hops, and they ship hops straight from their family-owned farm to your doorstep. Producing the highest quality hops is HopsDirect.com's passion, and they're proud to be an independent grower in the craft beer industry. Go to HopsDirect.com right now and get what you need to make your brew day better. That's HopsDirect.com. Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam-packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining, Entertaining shows. shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Problems with picnic taps, dry hopping without oxidizing my beer, and dealing with moldy equipment. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 358. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. And if you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you could go to homebrewhappyhour.com. You could click on that submit a question link at the top of the page or even better. You could call it in. You could text it, but you could call it in to 325-305-6107. And if I use your voicemail on a future episode, you'll get yourself a $25 gift card to KetConnection.com. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Stubin. Joining me as always, he is the Director of Operations at CMBecker.com over there, Mr. James Carlson. My friend, you are you are lone wolfing it there at headquarters so i promised yep. I, I promised i'd be quick um uh, our well, some of our crew is out uh it, it is diff uh, she has kids and kids get sick this time of year so we're missing some of our shipping crews so you're overseeing that you're overseeing the phones you are uh making sure the orders go out it's a very hectic day for you i promised i'd be quick mr burns is noticeably absent for people who are watching at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. He's in Abilene right now, which is what an hour and a half away from y'all and uh, yeah. getting an epidural because he's finally ready to deliver the baby. No, he, yeah. <laughs> he did not laugh when I made that joke. He, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, dude, you look like you're 12 months pregnant. Like, the, is it time? <laughs> it's finally time. The, the, the bun's done cooking, but no, he is, he's actually in so much back pain. He, he is dreading the flight y'all are about to take to Germany because, and so he's getting an epidural, which I guess is going to deaden the nerve for the, at least the weekend. Uh, oh yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be amazing. He, he won't believe it. So I'm happy for the guy. I mean, I'm not happy 
that he's going to Germany. Uh, y'all are going and I'm staying back. But that's a whole other, that's a uh, homebrew happy therapy hour uh, that's coming on. That's a bonus for members of our Patreon. No, just kidding. But Todd is getting that shot. Someone did. He has been out a lot lately. And someone was like, are you kicking him off the show? And I was like, yes, James and I, <laughs> James and I have been conspiring to get Todd off the show. No, he's just been busy. This time of year is always super busy. Y'all, uh, like, you, you know, we, we have been shorthanded in regards to people being sick or whatever and then trade shows and it's just a hectic time year and right now black friday sale going on it's not black friday yet if you're watching this today we publish it happy thanksgiving though we hope that you are having a great time with friends and family if you're watching this or listening the day that we publish it which is thanksgiving 2023 maybe you're not having that great a time and this is your escape from family interaction so we welcome you to the show if you're one of those people if you're trying to get away from political conversations and whatnot we're here for you because uh i did take voicemails and the first question is about abortion no i'm kidding uh, sorry, I'm all over the place today, James. No, the, you're looking at the question like, is it really? No, no, we have a great show lined up. I'm going to get through this small talk. Um, if you're not already a part of our YouTube community, the vast majority of you listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, do not interact with us or uh, our content at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. And I'd appreciate it if you did, because James, as of this episode, as we're recording it on Wednesday, we're right at 6,000, which for us, I, I, in the bigger picture of YouTube, that's nothing. It's nothing. But we have never spent a penny towards, um, you know, growth, if that makes sense. Like, I, there is a lot of channels that have tens and tens of thousands, but their engagement's low. And it's like, oh, okay, Chinese bot farms, whatever. We have yeah. really tried to make Homebrew Happy Hour an organic community from the beginning, our Trub Club is a, a triple digits now. We got a very strong community of people that are engaging in our content and whatnot. And that's what we've been trying to do over at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour as well. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish new content. Because it's not always the podcast that we're publishing at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. A lot of the time it's how to videos, instructionals, DIY wise things like that the most popular videos we do james are the other kind of content stuff so we don't want y'all missing out on that um also right now it is thanksgiving which is the happiest time of the year because we're all gluttons and stuff in our face but also it's the happiest time of year because it's 15 percent off site wide right now at catconnection.com throwing that up on the screen for everyone who's watching the show to see it's all those products plus everything else on the site is at least 15% off and this sale is good now through the end of the month. So November 30th, that's your last time to take advantage of 15% off site wide. You are going to get the best pricing of the year on a lot of things, especially the, it's like 19% off. Todd put those 18 liter kegs, the ones we've been boasting and raving about on this show. They're on sale for like six, Ninety nine ninety five, and um, so they're you know right at eighteen liters, or probably a little bit over eighteen liters, and just incredible kegs and incredible shape. James, y'all, we've been pushing a lot out the door. You can attest that they are just incredibly good kegs, especially considering they are technically new, but they're completely remanufactured. So. It's hard to tell that they were ever used, but you can go to kegconnection.com. No coupon code required. Take advantage of the deals right now because, again, I promise you all, it does not get any better than this. And as of recording this right now, on the screen at the bottom right, there's the Cooler Brew system. I believe we only have two or three left that we can sell now. We're, we're very low on Cooler Brew, and those are going for $199.95. That is the absolute cheapest you're going to get into cooler based brewing it's a mash tun it's a hot liquor tank the mash tun comes with the false bottom it comes with this little sparging aeration hose too that james that's a heck of a deal for somebody who's trying to get into all grain brewing and up to 10 gallons of yield because these are 11 gallon coolers so there's a lot of good stuff again catconnection.com yep. no promo code needed and then uh, members of our Chub club which we've had three people join in the last week since we published or last two weeks since we announced that this month it's a California common 
our homage to Anchor Steam's beer, the now defunct womp, 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 Anchor Brewing Company out of the Bay Area. I know, dude. I know. I don't want to talk about it either. They, it's so depressing. Uh, uh, they obviously, I don't know, maybe they'll sell the recipe or maybe some le- company will come and reboot it as a legacy brand. They did that before with like Olympia um uh pearl i believe got re relaunched at some point you know what i mean like some companies do that over time where they buy the name and try to bring it back for nostalgia's sake maybe we'll see that but anyway or if you're a homebrewer just brew it yourself go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour join a recipe receiving tier of the trub club and you'll get this incredible recipe shipped out to you with premium ingredients from our friends and sponsors munton's malt Hopsteret.com, and of course, the wonderful Imperial Yeast, giving us premium ingredients for these recipe kits. I'm super excited to have California comment on tap because Todd told me, well, he told me when y'all get back, he's going to brew it. So, geez, that's not for two weeks. But but we're going to have it on tap at some point. Um, I have two kegs of breakfast out, one for you, my friend. And cool. I'm just going to leave it upstairs, right? When I get there, you want me to just leave it upstairs? You take it from there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, there's another keg of beer that's up there now, but it's aging. I'm trying to age out a flaw in it. Wait, is that the Fest um, beer or which one is it? No, that's the uh, that's the second batch after that. So I don't know how that happened, to, but I did try it the other day and it seemed to be kind of going away. It's got some DMS in it. So... I'm you logger that probably out. won't go away. You don't think so? I'm gonna try. Yeah, I, I'm gonna just leave them up there and leave them kegged and test them every once a mm-hmm. month, and hopefully they'll come out. If not, I'll I'll pour it out. I hate to do that, but I well, went ahead and kegged them anyway. Just just so if they do come out halfway decent and that cabbage taste is gone, then you'll have a keg of beer. But or you could take it anyway. Yeah, you, right. You, you may need to try it and <laughs> I, see. I take it. Uh, I don't like it. Um, it, it, don't like it at all. I have a new strategy for family get togethers. My pop and my mom, my folks just host a bunch and we've had such good beer lately. We need a not so good beer on tap and only serve that. So then people stop coming over and drinking all my beer. That's like the, the new angle I'm going to take in 2024. My resolution, y'all are hearing it here first. An early resolution for 2024 is to keep bad beer on tap for the first couple of events of the new year so that people stop drinking all my beer. That's actually terrible. That's a selfish uh, resolution. But anyways, I do believe, Mr. Carlson, that's a world record for me getting out of the small talk. So with all that being said, it's time for listener feedback. Got three questions and got three voicemails because our first voicemail is some listener feedback. It's our buddy Nate from Arizona, and he's got some feedback about getting better efficiency. Let's try this again. Uh, morning, fellow home brewers. I'm calling to leave a little bit of feedback in regards to Nate from Oregon's question that was on this last episode about mash efficiency. Um, this is Nate from Arizona, so I can't forget his name, obviously. That's an awesome name. Um, um, but I wanted to say um, I I also um, used to have some issues getting my high efficiencies, and I started doing a double green. Actually, I, I don't even double green necessarily, but my wife has a KitchenAid mixer and everything, so we got an attachment for that. And the coarsest setting is still very fine. It's similar to like a double grind if you ask the brewery to double grind it for you, or the brew store, I mean. Um, so I get super high efficiency. Um, maybe not quite as high as Todd, but but pretty high up there. Yeah. Get some awesome efficiency, even with a six gallon batch of green. I made I don't know like a session blonde ale, and I still got like a ten forty two gravity. You know, so getting some good gravities off that in a five gallon batch. But my point is, um, before I, I did most of my I do a mash cooler system now, cooler brew for most of my brews. Um, but when I have a smaller volume, and I'm not and I don't think it's going to maintain it as good. Or before I did the mash cooler system, I would um, actually brew it in the brew or mash it in the, in the kettle itself. And I noticed if you use that that fine mesh reusable bag they use for brewing brewing a bag type of bags, they can be a little too tight, and I feel like you don't extract as much liquid out of it. So you almost got to do a little bit of a squeeze, which I know is controversial to squeeze or not to squeeze the bag because you can extract those tannins 
and that astringent flavor, um, just like if you over sparked, like James was talking about. Um, but however, though, um, I noticed if I am doing a brew in the bag method, a little squeeze isn't bad. Or instead of using that nylon kind of mesh reusable bag, instead use a muslin bag, but double double bag it so it's not too loose and doesn't leak out everywhere or too much grain doesn't leak it out. Um, anyway, guys, I've been up all night, so I can't talk good. But <laughs> either way, try a finer grind is what I recommend for an awesome mesh efficiency. Or if he's going to keep on brewing in a bag, um, you know, maybe give it a little squeeze or try maybe a looser fabric where that green is going to get out if you're if you're doing it in a bag only. Anyway, guys, enjoy the show. Have a great day. Keep on brewing. Thank you so much for the feedback. The obligatory talking about squeezing the bag, the inappropriate squeezing gestures I like to do. Someone called me out one time doing it on the show. Now every time I have to do the inappropriate. I've never done brewing a bag, but I know people that do brew in a bag double mill their grains for the sake of higher efficiency. So that made sense. He's not wrong in regards to the controversy. Everyone I've mentioned it to on the show or in our chub club that does a brew in a bag believe it or not james they all squeeze and they say i know yeah. well you remember we talked to that the the guy at one of the homebrew cons that made those and he was going he went on and on he was talking to you and me yeah. specifically yeah. about squeezing the bag yeah oh yeah yeah and people and but people also get very strong opinions on it and uh i think you know, whatever works for you, works for you. Like what Nate was saying, and I just want to reiterate because he is brewing in coolers now. Um, I, I already mentioned his sales hat coming on real quick. I just want y'all to know it is in such limited quantity that if you want to get into all grain brewing on a cooler <laughs> system and not spend a ton of money to do it, I, I'm, I, and I hope that it's actually still in stock by the time this publishes at on Thanksgiving Day around uh, 11 a.m. because we only have such a limited uh, availability of the cooler brew that we sell at CatConnection.com. And that is just a fantastic way to make good beer, especially if it's your uh, entry into all grain brewing. The cooler system that we uh, that we have that you've used and I've used and Todd used is just so uh, efficient. And like I said, and you can consistently make good beer on that. In fact, one of our most watched videos that cooler brew brew day that you and Todd did that ESB is still mm -hmm. one of my favorite ESBs ever made. Yeah. Y'all remember how good that oh, batch yeah. was? Oh. It was really good. And, and people can watch that video and, and see just how effective the system is in regards to holding temp. Because that's what the things that matter about making good beer on brew day is temperature, 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 hygiene, 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 temperature, hygiene. Like it's back and forth between temperature, hitting your numbers and, and being hygienic. And when y'all opened up that mash ton after an hour and it was within one degree of where we let it sit. That's what I think sells a lot of people on it because they're like, oh, those things are insulated real well. But anyways, yes, the, the nobody has as good of efficiency as Todd Burns. Just ask him. So, Nate, thank yeah. you so much for submitting that feedback. A reminder, when you leave feedback to 325-305-6107 as a voicemail, and I use it on a future episode, you get yourself a $25 gift card or even better – or the same amount of money on a gift card, but I appreciate it more. Call that same hotline, leave a question. I'll use it on a future episode. I immediately get to the gift card, and then we get to uh, address your question and help other brewers too. It's a win-win, win-win. And our first question for this week is a voicemail. It's our buddy Ron from New Jersey. Hey, guys. This is Ron from New Jersey. I've got a question for you that has been bugging me for a while now. I am literally looking at my graveyard baggie of black picnic taps, the little plastic black picnic, picnic taps that I've used over the years. And I'm wondering why is it that these things break so often and that always the failure point is the two little nubs below the lever on top of the picnic tap. Is there anything that can be done to sort of reinforce that or make them last longer? And perhaps most importantly, how come no one is making a decent stainless steel version of this that doesn't fall apart after a year? Uh, if you guys have any information on that or where to get them, where to get a better one besides telling me to go get faucets because just not ready for faucets yet, guys. Will be soon, but not yet. Anywho, love your show. Josh does a great job keeping you all organized and wrangled and uh, appreciate everything you do. Thanks. Bye. Ron took the thunder out of us because we were going to say get real faucets. But let, let me start with the answer. That's the, the easiest answer because they're cheap. 
Well, they, they they cost like a buck fifty to make uh, or, or less, and and we do, and we sell them for like two fifty. I mean, they they are they are extremely budget friendly solutions because they're not meant to be long term, right, James? Like they're not they're, yeah. they're not intended. I mean, some people do have that system where they open the fridge and they just do that and they can do it a while. But if you're drafting a bunch, those things, it's just wear and tear. Do you have any, let's address the first part before we then chastise him and, and give our other answers. But do you have uh, any recommendations of making them last longer? Cause honest to God, I can't think of a single thing besides dispense less. And that's counterintuitive to what we're trying to do here as home brewers. Yeah, no, I, I just never have used them. I've been lucky enough, you know, the job I have here with CM Becker and I have a draft system at home. So, and if I was going to use a party tap, I would use a squeeze valve, (laughs) you know, yeah, (laughs) and and I wouldn't mess with those because that's the thing is they're cheap. So they're expendable. Yes. Yes. Um, I know more beer. They offer a exact same copy of a picnic tap and stainless steel. Oh, they do. Oh. They do. And and it's exact. It's a carbon copy of the plastic one, but it's in stainless steel. Um, interesting. That'd be interesting. You know, that's quite a bit. They're quite a bit higher. You know, you could probably buy seven of the cheap picnic taps for what one costs. So I guess in the end, depends on how many you go through in, in a, a certain amount of time, but you know, check them out. More beer's been a real good friend of ours. Oh yeah, they're great people. And uh, oh, yeah. definitely check it out on their website. Yeah, absolutely. The only criticism that I've heard from More Beer lately is that someone said, "Why aren't there beer kits on Better Sale for Black Friday?" And it was on Reddit, and I wanted to tell them because beer kits make no money as it is. That's right. <laughs> they're labor hogs. They are so bad. It is like, uh, yeah, I, yeah. See, people thought I was about to throw more beer into the bus, but no, we love those guys. They're great people. But mm-hmm. but when I saw that criticism, I just I laughed, dude, because I was like, <laughs> that is so consumer one hundred and one of like. Why aren't you doing better deals on beer kits? Because they're already not making money on the beer kits. I can almost guarantee you that. I've seen what they sell them for, Northern. Uh, Everybody doing beer kits, I look at it and like, how are they making money? I just don't understand. Well, that's the problem is they're not. Yes. And (laughs) they're supplementing what they make on other products to pay for all the red that's in the homebrew line yeah yeah ingredients is a rough but ingredient kits is just a rough thing to be in right now especially when people are like i don't want to pay 50 bucks for a five gallon kit for a blonde ale it's like yeah with shipping and labor and all that they're not making any money but either way what what did you look up the i i can't actually pull it up i tried and i was like oh yeah we're recording. i did yeah. how, how much is the stainless steel they're they're fifteen dollars a piece. Okay, on more beer. Okay, yeah. so fifteen. I was because I was going to say fifteen's not close enough for me to make this stretch. But going back to what you had said, my my legitimate answer, not to take business from more beer now, uh, the stainless steel one. Give it a try, guys. Let us know if you like it. But I legitimately believe if you have a salute uh, a situation that you're using the Cobra tap or Pitna taps as we call them, the plastic ones, there is no reason you couldn't implement the CM Becker flow control event faucet. And that thing mm-hmm. lasts you forever. That yeah. thing. And you get parts. So it's not a throwaway part. thing. It's not a throwaway thing. It, it, it's, it is very durable. You clean it after, you know, you clean it like you would a draft system line and it will last absolutely forever. Uh, the, the parts like you said are available if you, if you have to had to replace anything, but more importantly, it gives you real flow control in that party tap kind of so it doesn't take up a lot of space is what i'm getting at it's not a permanent installation it is like a i have one in my beer fridge here because i don't have a a teaser or a kegerator yet unsure if i've thrown todd under the bus about it enough but he he told me oh i've got a kegerator set up i can get you and they took it away but he's not here to defend himself but i have a squeeze valve uh the party faucet or the flow control event faucet from cm becker and that's you know todd calls it a 50 dollar solution to a five dollar problem or whatever but yeah. but i will say it flow control versus not flow control is game changing dude it is totally game changing because then also i can run a short line of five sixteenth tubing i use blue five sixteenth tubing i might have two feet on it just connect i open up my fridge door connect to the keg pouring right there and even better than that, the faucet's versatile because when I'm force carbing beer and after after kegging it, 
that faucet is integral integral to that integral to that process as well for me you know like a, like being able to determine that the beer is carbonated where i want it to be in real time and without blowing a gasket on some faucet standard faucet because i'm trying to pump out 40 psi through it or whatever it's game changing so what i'm getting at sales hat back on or sales hat back off whichever one i just did uh the that it would be my legitimate answer is you're already getting the gift card that damn near splits the cost of it in half ron go buy yourself a flow control event faucet and be happy like the rest of us who have them because it is, it's a game-changing piece of equipment but if uh anyone out there is listening and has experience with the black plastic pitnet taps and you're like no here's what i do don't don't bother uh, uh having to replace them here's what you do let us know in the comments below at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour or leave us a voicemail at 325-305-6107 or however you want to communicate it to us because like james said he's we don't really use them and if he has a graveyard baggie of them I suspect he's almost spent as much as a flow control event faucet would cost him. So yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause I mean, they're so cheap. They're the retail on kconnection.com is two ninety five. So yeah, they're, yeah, I guess they're you cheap. just got to figure out how much you're breaking and is it worth going up to, you know, anything higher than that? Exactly. Yeah. And I know he, I'm not ready for faucets. I wouldn't, I'm going to call, a flow control event faucet, the same category as I call a party faucet because of its portability and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's not a permanent installation. So I didn't say get faucets, Ron, as much as I said, get a flow control event faucet and just view it as a pricier, but long lasting investment, like a black party faucet like that. I always called them Cobra taps. I don't know where we got that from, but party tap yeah. is the common yep. one. But anyways, Ron, Thank you so much for submitting that question. Moving on, but first, a gentle reminder, if and when you leave us a voicemail to 325-305-6107, you do get yourself a $25 gift card to KetConnection.com. If you text that same number, 325-305-6107, you still get yourself a $15 gift card, which I think is pretty good, like our buddy Scott did, and he texted me saying... If I ferment in a corny keg and need to dry hop after a week or two, do I shoot CO2 into the batch after opening and then closing the lid to prevent oxygen from ruining it? Thanks, Josh. I wish all of you the best. This is Scott. And I took out his last name so I wouldn't dot some on the internet. Um, it's a good question, James. When you're fermenting, period, whatever the vessel mm -hmm. is and your recipe, your batch rather, calls for a dry hop. Is there mm -hmm. a big concern for introducing oxygen into that vessel? And how do you prevent it from happening once you do drop in your bag of hops or however you're dry hopping? Don't do a lot of dry hopping, but I know when I have <laughs> in the past, I've kind of flushed. I have a, kind of a homemade container that I can push CO2. So I'll put the hops in it, and I want to say it's an old um, – it's just an old, it looks like a, a white container with a screw on lid. And I put the hops in there and just stick this, the, uh, the hose off of a CO2 cylinder and just kind of blow it in there to purge the hops. But a lot of times I don't even do that. I just add them carefully into the fermenter and I've always had real good luck. So I don't know if I would uh, worry too much. Yeah, I, I think that maybe you can get in the weeds too much on this stuff. <laughs> uh, now, if you're just throwing them in the the fermenter, <laughs> yeah, make yeah. splashing and doing all that. Just introduce them as as smoothly without disturbing the ward as you can. And and if that means taking the lid off and purging it, if that makes you feel better, go ahead and do that. You can also purge it from the liquid side and pull the pressure relief valve on the top of the lid. And then what happens is the CO2 creates like a blanket on top of the wart or the beer. And it, it's almost like a invisible barrier for oxygen because it's just setting there. You can, a lot of times people look into a keg, especially if it's one you got to dump. Anybody that's done that, the first thing I do is look to see how much beer is in the keg and you kind of <laughs> and then pour it out. Well, you can see the CO2 just sitting on top of the wart. Yeah. 
almost like a protective layer. So I think that uh, if you're just real nice and easy introducing those hops, um, another thing you can do is you can use a hop bag and then you can boil it to sanitize it. Uh, A lot of people do, a lot of people don't, and then put their hops in it, purge the keg, pull the lid and slowly drop it. No, don't drop it, but just lower it down into the wart without splashing it. And I think that's the best way to do it. That's the, yeah, that, that was going to be my input to this was um, the sterilization part was what I was going to stress. And I know Todd would probably agree to disagree in that it's already alcohol, bro. You're probably fine. But, mm-hmm. but sterilizing the bag uh, seems like the most important step for me predominantly because I'm not terrified of oxygen because of that CO2 blanket that I believe or that I've understood all this time brewing to be there. But I am afraid of my grubby little hands uh, getting something on the bag and then putting the bag in the wart. And now all of a sudden, you know, I let it dry hop for a week and then I go to keg it and then I I drink it like a few days later. I'm like, what on earth did that, you know, because I introduced something in fetch and when it's so easy to sterilize the bag. Yeah. And and also another thing to bring up is maybe it's not because it does have alcohol in it. That's going to prevent it for the most part of getting infected. But I believe personally, and people will argue with me on that, that's not always the case. That's not always the primary concern. It's about will it affect the way the beer tastes oh, good in point. the long run? No, you're absolutely right. So, yep. so even though it does have alcohol in it and you're putting, you're introducing something in after fermentation. We just want to make sure and cover all our bases so we don't affect the flavor profile that you work so hard to create brewing it. So that would be my thing about doing pre a boiling and sanitizing and sterilizing the hot bag, putting the hops in, even if you need to wear gloves, uh, purge them like I do. If you, if that makes you feel, it makes me feel better when I do it. And then when you put it into the fermenter, I understand with glass carboys, you have an opening about that big. So you have to be really careful on how you introduce the hops with just as little splashing as possible. And I don't know about you, Josh, but one of the worst flaws that I hate is oxidation. You don't like that cardboard? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I do not. Yeah. I don't know if you remember so, the story. It was... Uh, was it a California? No, my dad and I wouldn't have lagered. And I know in back to, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the California common, it is technically a lager guys. So if you're in the Trub club of, at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, but the yeast is, is at 65 or 68 or whatever on the high end. So it's basically fermenting at an ale temp. So with the temperatures, I don't know what it is there, James, right now it's 59 here. Um, I yeah, can do that if here. The sun's in... out. It's nice, but it's still kind of chilly. It's yeah. 62. Yeah, it's vi- but what my point being, we could we could ferment this California common in a closet in central Texas right now and be fine. That that's one of the reasons I felt comfortable doing that homage uh this month for for Anchor Brewing because I knew most places around the country you'd be able to do it. Maybe some folks in Florida are gonna need a glycol setup or something to, to cool it. But even then, do it under pressure. We like we mentioned before on the gift giving idea one last year. We have no shortage of those 18 liter kegs and the quick carbonating lid and the fermenting lid and the lid that has a floating dip tube. We just need to make a bundle. I, I say we. Todd, if he was on the show, you mean you need to make a bundle? Yes, boss, I do. But we'll have that there. Um, yeah, dry hopping is not really a thing we do. But like you said, James, but precaution and hygiene uh, are going to be your friend during the process of of um, of dry hopping. But also, too, I know it'll be an add-on question, not to drag it out for the sake of it. Are you waiting for primary to be done before you yes. dry hop every time, right? Every, every time, because CO2 can scrub off the flavors of the hops. So you want to make sure primary fermentation is done and over with. My personal opinion, the best time to dry hop is when you're doing the secondary or you're racking into a secondary fermenter or absolutely all the p- fermentation is done. And I like to dry hop at room temp. I don't dry hop when it's super cold because oh. I think that also can affect the way the hop flavor tastes. Interesting. That's going to get some feedback. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Some people are going to be like, well, actually, Mr. Carlson, um, I can't wait. And I don't want you to wait. So call in your feedback at 325-305. No, it, 
Think about it this way. Have you ever had a warm Coors Light and a cold Coors Light? <laughs> Which one tastes better? The ice cold Coors Light that I can't taste. And, and that's because you can, <laughs> when it's warm, you taste everything. everything. So everything comes out. But when it's cold, uh, some of the stuff, the off flavors, if you could even call it that, I think it's just the the base malt. It is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's if they're using corn or rice or both. It just it, you can taste it. So I, I think that if you're wanting aromatics to really hit, and that's why you're doing a, a dry hop, I always dry hop warm. It seems to have a better, you extract more flavors from the hops when it's at room temp than if it's cold. Now, your lemon drop pills is a dry hop as well, right? That mm-hmm. That's one of the few yeah. I can remember. I, I agree. that you, The way... Whatever your process is for that batch, it brings out the lemon of the lemon drop hops so good. It's not punch you in the face lemon. It's just no, such not a, at all. It's, it's such a so subtle you could yeah. almost miss it. It's so, but it's so pleasant because it's mm-hmm. it, it's uh we got to do that for in the summer. Like oh that, definitely yeah that'll good, probably be the next beer I brew. It won't oh be a God. pilsner, but it, well yeah, <laughs> yeah. technically well, it well, is a pilsner. <laughs> we'll have to ask Lorena about that. Wasn't she the one who <laughs> she did? didn't. She did not want to try it. And then when she finally did, she was like, wow, this is, actually is pretty that good. That was my favorite. Well, remember, not only did she not want to try it, she goes, that's not a style. There is no. <laughs> and, and like, oh, gave us so, I, I say us, gave you so much grief. And then only for her to absolutely love it. Uh, <laughs> she's she's coming to the ranch in a few weeks and a couple cool. of weeks actually. And I'm really, I, if I was smart enough or if I was clever enough, I would have brewed something with fuggles in it to have on tap just to get her reaction. That's her least favorite hop in the world is fuggles. And when we've done an ESB, we don't use those. We use uh, EKG, um, East Kent Goldings. And uh, mm-hmm. she's like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. But fuggles is just so earthy. It's so earthy. And uh, I want to, I wanted to lie to her. I wanted to do an ESB with fungals mm-hmm. and then say, no, it's ETG. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And just gaslight her. You know, it's f- fun stuff for the holiday season. But anyways, uh, I've drugged the question out enough. Scott, thank you so much. And again, guys, if y'all have feedback for Scott, preferably go to youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, find this episode and leave it in the comments there. If you want to try to get yourself a gift card and it's really good feedback that you think I'll use on air in the future, you can leave it as voicemail to 325-305-6107 and get yourself a $25 gift card like when you leave us a voicemail question. Like our third question and final question for this week's episode, crack open the Jack and Mountain Dew, James, because it's our buddy Marty from Omaha. Yeah. (laughs) Hello, Josh and all my friends there at Homebrew Happy Hour. This is Marty from Omaha. Hey, I have a quick question. Uh, I never really had trouble with molds before, but recently I looked in my little teaser and noticed some black spots and didn't really know for sure. I looked up some conflicting results on whether star sand or a sanitizer kills mold or not. Uh, what do you guys, have you ever had any trouble with mold and how do you go about cleaning it? I love your show. Always get a lot of good information from you. Have a great day. Marty knows pretty much I've, I've established this kind of fanboyism for him. So he leaves voicemails and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, to everybody on the waiting list, it's time for Marty. We got to get him to the ranch and drink some Jack and Dew. Anyway, if y'all aren't familiar <laughs> with that reference, it was like episode 200 something or even 100 something where he introduced the concept of Jack and Mountain Dew. No, maybe it's when I was doing Booze News Weekly. Either way, um, his question, it's a good one. So I, I said in the title, you know, dealing with moldy equipment, but it's not really equipment we see mold in most of the time. It's like what he's saying. The teaser, as moisture develops and if it goes undetected because there's corners or whatever, you're just not always checking. It, mold isn't uncommon. I, I, I would not venture to say it's super common. But uh, as far as I know, these equipment sanitizers like Sandstep or Star Sand, like he mentioned specifically by name, they're not really like, is that going to be enough to, to surface clean with those or are there better things dealing with mold, whether it's just your teaser or any equipment that might develop some mold? Get the, uh, the easiest way to control mold. I used to run, this was years and years ago in another lifetime ran restaurants 
and we used uh, just a little water, uh, a little bleach with water, and it was that's what we used to sanitize our tables after we we the the person cleaning the ah what do we call those people like bus boys cleans the tables bus boys, and they would have a solution of soapy water, and then they have a solution of uh, sanitizer, and it was just some water with some bleach, and that bleach will kill any mold. And we had, I had to have, well, the kitchen staff would always use both the soap and the and the sanitizer with bleach on the make ready table, which is a, just a refrigerated. It's basically a big old key, kegerator or a keezer that holds all the ingredients on the line. So when they're cooking, they can just pull off of that. Well, down there below that, because it's it's impossible to keep to keep it airtight because you have segmented pots or containers in the top. I'm sure you've seen them before. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And uh, if you get water, if you get air introduced into a cooler and you have any kind of sugar or any kind of food or doesn't matter what it is, mold will pop up if you don't clean it daily. And the same thing goes for beer. Anybody with a kegerator or a keezer, you're going to get beer inside of it. And if you do, and it's not completely sealed off and it's pulling the way you can tell if a kegerator or a teaser is not holding tight or airtight is it'll start frosting up in certain areas or you'll notice a lot of water in the bottom of the kegerator and that water will mix with the sugar in the, any residual beer that's inside that kegerator or teaser and it'll start growing mold because mold just needs air and a food source which is the old beer and it'll just grow like crazy. But if you shoot it with some bleach bleach water, it'll knock it out and it'll keep it at bay. But you got to do it regularly. And I know that's what Todd's used in his teaser before. Which brings me to a question, though: uh, it, bleach, it, like so we you know we're using st- uh, sand step and like a keg or iota four or whatever, and that's mm-hmm. that's rinse free drip whatever. When you're using yeah. the bleach one though, you're not air drying. I mean, you are you're wiping it up. It just it it kills that surface contact, and then you wipe it up, right? Yeah, I, I've done it both ways. Oh, okay. Uh, you normally I'll let because uh, in a kegerator or a keezer, I keep saying kegerator in a keezer, because of the fact that most keezers have a collar added to them, they're probably not going to be as sealed off as they were when you bought it, and it had a good seal with the. You know, it was all made that way. Yep. But when you move the lid, you put the wooden collar on it, put the lid back in it. For the most part, it's sealed, but it, you're going to have some air intrusion in there. And from time to time, you'll have to use a little bleach water and just take a, you can take a towel or you can take a paper towel or a regular towel, just spritz it, wipe it off. You don't even, if you don't want to, if, if, if it's really bad with mold, you're going to want to wipe all that off and clean it up. But every now and then, if it's not moldy, just spritz the walls, close the lid, and go on to your day. Now the- because it'll it'll keep it at bay, and it'll keep it mo- the, It'll it won't dry out. Mm-hmm. It will eventually, but for the most part, it'll keep the mold from forming. It'll keep it at bay, right? It's like preventative mm-hmm. care. Now, the budget-minded yeah. person might be listening to this and go, "Well, James Carlson, why am I not just using bleach for all my sanitary needs when it comes to all of my equipment?" Because that's not common. We don't see most yeah. people they buy I did when I first started brewing beer, I would use bleach water. I'd have a but then I would have to rinse it and dry it and you know, that can also introduce bacteria and cause potential infection. Uh, there's issues about losing, using bleach water. You really need test strips to, for the level and you don't want to get too much bleach in it. Cause then it's hard to rinse off. It's just so much easier. They've got, you know, you're always saying now is the best time to be a home brewer. That's true. The chemicals are better. The equipment's better. Uh, there's no reason to use bleach water now. If you've got sand step or star sand Absolutely. or anything like yeah. that, that should technically kill it. Yeah. But if it's just a, a mold issue, don't sweat it. Just yeah. a little bleach water, yeah. and uh, and you're good to go. Yeah, like you said, don't don't worry about bring, making up a batch of of sand step. Like you can just use the bleach water. Or I was gonna say again, one last time, friends. Let me put my sale hat on. Uh, at catconnection.com, we do have a bunch of that QA surface cleaner, the stuff that was real popular, James, when COVID first came out. Remember, because it was uh, one of the first third party or one of the first. 
uh, branded sanit surface sanitizers to be approved as being able to claim that they it kills the COVID-19, SARS, whatever, whatever virus. Um, I do believe that one as well is highly recommended on, on non-porous surface levels for totally cleaning, or totally sanitizing, pardon me, not cleaning. There, semantics matters in this, friends. It's not cleaning, it's sanitizing. It's killing bacteria. It's not soap and water uh, washing and cleaning something. This is sanitation or sanitizing that I'm referring to. But anyways, the Q&A or the QA is available at catconnection.com for 30% off right now. So my point just being, let me put it on the screen. Get yourself a huge savings right now, now, now. Sell, sell. 15% off site-wide, catconnection.com. And that's it. Sales hat off for another at least few minutes. But anyways, Marty... As always, my friend, thank you for submitting the question. And if you have any trouble with mold or whatever in a different way you deal with it, leave it in the comments below or call it in to 325-305-6107 and maybe get yourself a $25 gift card. Who knows? We'll see if I play your voicemail on a future episode. But Marty, thank you for submitting yours. And Mr. Carlson, I appreciate you spending the last 40 some odd minutes with me started. I I know you are swamped, but I think we did it. I didn't drag anything out too long. I appreciate your time. I have a a wonderful Thanksgiving day and um, have a safe trip to Germany. Please keep Todd out of trouble. And um, Uh, I mean, if you I'm (laughs) telling you, if you've looked at the weather. Have oh, you looked at the weather? Oh, it's going to be freezing. It's going to be freezing. It's going to be not only freezing, but it's going to be drizzle, or it's going to be snow, or it's going to be sleet. I, I, you know what? The though? whole time. I do have a favor. Uh, I will Venmo you. Uh, when you're in Nuremberg, the Christmas market's going on, and and legitimately, mm-hmm. one of the only things I regret not being able to see by not going, uh, the the glue, the vine, G-L-U-H. Ugh. I know, yeah. but get me the mug. You want a bottle of that? No, 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 just the mug. It, like, there's a the mug. There's a vendor that every time they have ceramic muds, they're little six ounce cups. And I last time I was there, it was like six euro, which is like an eight bucks or something, some odd seven dollars and some odd cents. Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever the amount is, I will Venmo to because I want an update. Oh on. no, I got it. Don't I even know sweat you do, it. They're everywhere. That, that's all I want is the ceramic, gl- the blue ones. I, I, I say blue. They were blue. What happened year. to the ones that we got when we were there? I have mine. I have my, I'm very protective of mine, but I don't know. Todd, you know what? Todd has his in the um, in the barn because I use that as my hmm. coffee cup when I'm up there. And that's what I use Weird. it for here, too. I like drinking coffee in six ounces. It's, uh, it, it, it's just <laughs> enough to get me caffeinated, but not enough for me to waste. But anyways, yes, I will. I'll text you and remind you all just in case, because that's the only thing I want from Nuremberg. This year is uh, a Glühwein. Glühwein? Glühwein. Someone, Glühwein. The pedantic Germans are going to correct me. Anyways, my friend, thank <laughs> you so much for your time. I'll catch you, you later. You bet. And so, yeah. that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com. Click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or even better, have I said it enough? You can get yourself a $25 gift card when you leave the voicemail at 325 325- 305-6107 and obviously when I play it on a future episode. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> How about the right one? Thank you to our show sponsors like Munton's Malt. Premium grains for a better brew day. If you aren't already brewing with Munton Malts, give them a try by joining our Trub Club at a recipe receiving level. For the best hops available online, give our friends at HopsDirect.com a visit and pick up what you need for your next brew day. Also, get a pack of Imperial Yeast along with premium recipes from us when you join the Trub Club. Go to Patreon.com forward slash Homebrew Happy Hour and come brew with us. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>